So now that we've got the joint turned on, I have already ran my USB cables around the dash and they come out here to my glove box. I went ahead and used all three and I marked this one as the OTG cable. And this is the one that I would recommend using the OTG USB input cable. So now let's go ahead and get our SD card installed on here. There we go, clicked in. We should see it pop up here. Now that it's back up, we can verify to make sure that it, the update has taken. There it is. Build number. August 24th. I also want to say that uh, the changes, uh, the, or the change log, I printed it out. It states that the, uh, the expansion for the USB and SD is up to 128. I'm pretty sure that the SD card that I had in here for my AR cameras was already set to 128 and it had no issues. So I don't think I'm gonna see anything there, but uh, the, it does say that the optimization for the sensitivity of the touchscreen, uh, that they have optimized that. The touchscreen was already fine for me. So I, again, I don't think I'm gonna see any improvements because it was great as it was. The third thing says that they have um, optimized the system's drop frame rate. I don't know exactly what that means, except for when I had my AR camera up and it had been in the sun and it was in the middle of summer, right? It's like 104 degrees. And I've got a clear roof. When it was really hot, the frame rates here on the AR camera were dropping. Like it would, you could see it frame by frame. It was kind of jittery. So I'm curious if I'm going to see any change there. That says that they have also optimized the connection for the wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. I don't use wireless CarPlay and I don't use Android Auto. I don't see why anybody would, considering that you've got an Android head unit here and it can do all the functions that you need if you just turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot of your phone. Now, if you don't have Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, then I understand connecting your phone and possibly using wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. But really, you have the ability to use the data on your phone through the USB connection. And so still, I would end up using the Android head unit rather than Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. All that aside, the only way that I could see someone that still wants Android Auto Apple CarPlay is for those that want a text message while they drive. Outside of that reason, I can't I can't comprehend why anybody would want Android Auto or Apple CarPlay when the head unit itself is so capable beyond what CarPlay and Android Auto give you. The next thing it says is that it has increased the Canvas protocol car models. Now that would be uh, that would be interesting. I can tell you that car info still doesn't work. There's no original car information for this model. What if we were to go into? I think it's in factory. Yeah. Jeep Common, current Canvas, Jeep Common. I remember having a hard time with all these. So it looks like that they have expanded it. And this touchscreen is hot from being in the sun. Jeep, Jeep Amp, huh. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot more than what there was previously. No, no, yeah, raise. That's good, okay. Let's see, what's the next thing? Number six is they have optimized the, the system configuration and performance is apparently more stable. I didn't have any issues before outside of the drop frame rates that I had inside the AR camera, and I'll test that in the coming days. They optimized the UI animation display. I, again, I didn't think anything was wrong with the UI animations. Uh, they optimized the EQ, yeah. So I did have some problems with uh, the EQ. I had my channel set to 4.1, and when I set my fade to the front, it would take away from my subwoofer, which for some reason it thinks that my subwoofer is located in the rear, which it is, but subwoofers don't, you know, like it doesn't really matter where it's located. Uh, so it shouldn't take, at least in the 2021 join, it never did take away the gain from my subwoofer whenever I moved it to the, the, the front or the rear. So I'll, I'm gonna play with that. Um, it was also adding power to the subwoofer when I would move towards, when I would fade to the rear. So that was really weird. I, 
I'm hoping that this might get fixed. I'll test that in the coming days. It does say that the software is going to be around 2.8 gigs and the update process takes about 5-8 minutes. I can confirm it took 7 minutes for me. Uh, after the firmware updates, wait about 1-2 to two minutes for the system. Uh, does need some time to load the files. It does go on to say that you need to set the buttons again in the settings. I'm assuming that they're talking about uh, the key learn areas. Panel knob, panel key learning. I think that this is what they're talking about. I'll play with that. So anyway, I'm going to leave a link down in the description of where you can get the updated file. And then I'll also let you guys know how to properly update each step that you need to take. Because originally I was taking the zip file and putting it on my SD card. And then I took the unzipped file and put it on the SD card. And by that I mean the folder, like the whole folder. Neither one of those were working. I had to take each file that was inside the folder and move all those files onto the SD card and then it updated. Food for thought.